up to me and said, hello, darling, I'm Jewel and I'm going to look after you. And um, she did. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to June Bronhill was born in Broken Hill in 1929 and was soon recognised as a gifted singer. In 1950, at 21, she became the youngest ever winner of the Sydney Sun Aria Singing Contest. And back in Broken Hill, a fundraising drive was organised to send June to Europe for further study. She was an absolute down-to-earth, you know, rural girl called June Goff and, you know, she was very, very no-nonsense. And yet here, because of this extraordinary gift that had been bestowed on her in her voice, she was sort of plucked out of obscurity and became the toast of London. She was a huge international star and yet she never left behind that country girl feel. She was a real larrikin. She loved telling she loved telling a blue joke. She always had little quips and things for you. Many a party she used to stand on the table and sing us songs until four o'clock in the morning. I met her at a party, one of those after the show type parties and she was a bubbly fun girl. I knew she'd sung She'd followed uh, Joan Sutherland at Covent Garden as Lucia de Lallemore and made a big hit, and I knew she was a star. But I expected an opera singer, and I got a party girl. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, I think she chose... She had a choice between a life or a life in opera, and she chose a life, I think, and was a fun girl. Oh, yes, she was always the last to leave, yeah. how she could do it and still keep that beautiful bell-like voice. next day, the bell -like voice, voice. Yes. Yes. incredible. Glorious voice, it really was. I still have some tapes of her and it's wonderful. It was a great, great voice. voice was remarkable in that it was absolutely effortless and natural, like an absolutely natural gift. Um, having said that, she had an extraordinary technique, like a really strong technique, um, and it was very much at her command. But it just had this crystalline, pure sound, a really um, sparkling, bright sound without being strident. Um, and a lot of singers try for years and years and years to get that sort of um, frontal resonance as, along with sort of a back resonance in, the, in their sound. And uh, for her, it just her voice just sat there in a really light, bright place. So it was really thrilling, like truly thrilling to hear. Soon after arriving in England, June Bronhill was taken up by the Sadler's Wells Opera. She quickly became a core member, and when the company decided to perform Franz Lehar's The Merry Widow, June was offered the title role and made that part her own. She'd already been singing the song Velia from The Merry Widow since childhood, and that became June's tune. Arriving in Melbourne from London yesterday were the principals of the Sadler Wells Opera for an Australian tour. Among them, Australian soprano June Bronhill and the basso buffo Hal Glynn. Now, I understand you took your professional name, Bronhill, from Broken Hill. That's right. The people yeah. of Broken Hill raised a fund for me to send me to England to study. And uh, uh, so, as a gesture of appreciation, I uh, decided to change my name to Bronhill, which is a contraction of Broken Hill. And you feel as though you've used that name all your life, do you? Yes, I, yes I think of myself as Mrs. Bronhill Martin now. Or Mrs. Miss Goff? Well, sometimes I think of myself as Mrs. Martin. I'll say that just for my husband's sake. <laughs> and for my, my, my mother and father's sake, I sometimes think of myself as June Goff. But generally speaking, it's June Bronhill. She had this terribly toffee accent. You know, you wouldn't expect that she... But you had to in England in those days because I worked in England in the 60s and they loathed the Australian accent. I remember I went to a, an audition and I was talking terribly like that out of the back of my neck. And the um, casting director said, and when are you going to get rid of that awful Australian accent? <laughs> But um, I and when think... when are you? Uh, yes, I don't know. And that 
that would be part of that for June. June would have swallowed her ego, gone over there, hitched up her little pair of slacks and got into it. Yeah. I, I found that when I first came here from England, there was a, there is a stitched up atmosphere in England. Mm. Or was, oh, I don't know, but, oh, that's, that's the but, statement of the century. But I found <laughs> that there was no side here, and June had no side. Mm-hmm. June, whether it was Broken Hill or, as you, as you say, just anywhere in Australia, she was a fair dinkum Aussie who got in there and told it like it was, and a, uh, it wasn't a piece of cake, it was a bloody damper or something like that. Mm-hmm. She, she, she was in there. Uh, and that was part of her spirit. I think the proof of stardom, in a way, is longevity of career. And she had an extremely long career, and she went on to do, you know, comedy. Are you being served? The Australian version. She did these mad shows like Women Behind Bars, which was this sort of cult music theatre hit. From that, you know, from the sublime to the ridiculous, you know, she sang Lucia de Lammermoor um, like no one has ever heard it. She was the greatest merry widow ever. You know, um, she was absolutely magnificent singing that role. She was known also for her acting skills. She had a fantastic comedic flair and timing and she also uh, had a fantastic fun and impish, irresistible sort of quality on stage that she brought to her characters. She's a very clever lady. For one gallon of elderberry wine, I take a teaspoonful of arsenic, half a teaspoonful of strychnine and just a pinch of cyanide. Well, that should have quite a kick. Oh, yes. And as a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious! Just before he died. <laughs> what did you um, say? She... I didn't say anything. <laughs> She's deaf, so it doesn't mean she doesn't hear much. That's why Watch she it. Can... That's thank I, I God she can't hear herself here. sing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> sing, feel you, just for a moment. Feel you. That's enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of June, I think of her always laughing. She had such a sense of mischief. And... She made you want to smile back. In fact, watching her work with an audience, you look around the audience and they smile back. And that's the most wonderful thing. Whenever she was on stage, she just looked like she was at home. She just looked like she was where she was meant to be. I've never seen someone so totally and utterly in their comfort zone standing on stage as June Bronhill. I think for that, for me, that is an enduring memory of her. June Bronhill passed away on January 25th, 2005. She was 75 and in her last years suffered from Alzheimer's and deafness brought on by tinnitus. Although she'd continued to act, tinnitus had ended her singing career in the early 90s. Apart from her numerous opera and theatre roles, in her career June Bronhill recorded over 30 albums of opera, operetta, musical comedy and sacred songs. This means that memories of the Darwin concert that we used to do together. So yes. how about it, June, once more, will ya? What do you mean? Do you want me to sing it? Yes. Come on. Why not? Come on. Oh, it's lucky I got over that cold, wasn't it? <laughs> In 1975, she was the second ever guest on the celebrity TV show This Is Your Life. Are we doing the, the version of The last time I actually heard her sing, not on stage, but, but it was actually the opening night of Merry Widow, my opening night of Merry Widow. And it was, um, it was really special that she came because it was her role. And, um, yeah, she came along, which was a really big effort for her. Sorry. Um, because she wasn't terribly well. And it was just... I was so proud to have the Merry Widow at my opening night. Uh, not to mention nervous, but I knew it was a really big effort for her to get there. And while they were, the producer was making speeches and, and you know, the, the um, sponsors were doing the kind of boring kind of opening night party speeches you have to do, she kept digging me in the ribs and insisted that we sing um, Velia together. 
<laughs> which and I kept saying tune it was like having an embarrassing sort of you know parent with you as a kid I was going tune shh. but the last time I heard her sing was actually um, at that party at that moment she she sang a few bars of Velia and by this time June was almost deaf but you know what she in the little snatch that she sang it was just it was just like an echo of that glorious voice but that was the last time I heard her sing the very saddest thing was that the deafness had set ah, in by then yes and the tinnitus and she didn't have the luxury of the quietness of deafness she said it's like a radio playing in my head 24 hours a day it was tortuous and she still performed and um how she stood it people didn't know what she was going through in those last she couldn't years. hear the bell note the the, the, the key and sometimes she'd start mm. off wrongly, which is very a, a woman of her capabilities. Going she through would have hated it. It was the saddest thing. My first thought when June went was, what a blessed relief it is for her not to have that radio playing in her head. June wouldn't have wanted that. June wouldn't wanted wouldn't have wanted those years of just fading into the into the horizon. I think the radio has stopped playing up there on the big opera stage in the sky and I think she's just got them all doubled over up there telling them the blue gags that she, only she knew how to and tell. And singing Velia. And singing June's tune, Velia. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say myself how very happy I am to be here tonight on this wonderful occasion and to be honoured by being asked to perform for you tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Now on Sunday afternoon, it's time to meet the Bollywood poster artists of India in Designing Dreams.